We have been taught that history is linear and that we're somehow moving forward and progressing as a humanity. This is a form of control because the reality is we're stuck in a cyclical loop of debt and death that has plagued humanity for thousands of years. Through the great works of Nikolai Kondratieff and the great work of William Strauss and Neil Howe in their seminal book, The Fourth Turning, I now see that history is cyclical and that so long as we support this consciousness of debt and death, that we will be doomed to repeat the past over and over again as far out as we can see. Every 80 years or so, societies face a societal paradigm crisis. This 80-year cycle has four seasons lasting about 20 years apiece, in that it mirrors the seasons of the year, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Out of the previous societal crisis, a new set of values and rules are established. After the crisis of the Great Depression and World War II, the spring season of our society was like our 1940s and 50s, where society provided a strong foundation for social and financial contracts to be formed. This brought about confidence and new businesses to be created. The summer societal season was like our 1960s and 70s. This arrives with growing confidence leading to some conflict of power, which leads to more debt. With this debt leads to more inflation. The fall season, like our 1980s and 90s, is marked by a cessation of the crisis and massive confidence that leads to more speculation and debt. The winter of our society, like the 2000s and 2010 decades, is marked by concern leading to fear, leading to panic, and leading to the ultimate collapse of the current paradigm. This cycle can be seen over and over again throughout history. Not only the seasonal nature of society, but also the secular nature of the cycle repeating. Every 80 years we face a winter crisis of the paradigm, and we are only halfway through our current winter cycle. Eighty years before this, we had the Great Depression and World War II, where the great engine of capitalism was somehow broken, and the world was plunged into the largest war ever. Eighty years before that, we had the Civil War, where the nation was divided and brother fought against brother. And eighty years before that, we had the Revolutionary War. Each time the society is challenged and either falls or reestablishes itself with new set of rules. Inside this cycle, there is a constant shift from paper assets to tangible assets as society deals with the challenges. In the spring and fall seasons, growing confidence and relative peace brings about debt and stronger valuations to paper assets. In the summer and winter seasons of the crisis, real tangible assets are the place to be. Seeing the cyclical nature of debt and death, it is clear to me that the 30-year chart of silver, that we're only halfway through the bull market in tangible assets. And it will not end until the paradigm either collapses or reestablishes itself with a new set of rules. Before this is all over, all the debt will be wiped away, all of our military presence will be relieved from the world, and the majority of wealth will find its way into real tangible assets. This has been shown over and over again throughout history. But this time around there's no guarantee that the United States is going to persevere in the same form that it went into the crisis period. The most recent summer crisis of the 60s and 70s resulted in social upheaval. This in turn was a crisis for the debt and death paradigm, where the guns and butter program led to a default of the dollar gold standard and the creation of the petrodollar, and the rampant inflation of the currency leading to the bull market into commodities. As you can see from the 30-year silver chart, the tangible bull market peaked in 1980 when silver reached $50 an ounce. The ultimate crisis of society was averted, when society accepted the petrodollar recycle trade that created more debt and a stable way of life was established. This led to huge amounts of debt being created and speculation in both the stock and housing bubbles. With so much investor demand in paper assets, the price of silver entered a bear market from 1980 until 2001. The current winter cycle started on 9-11-2001. This cycle created more war and debt, depressing paper assets so much so that the stock market has not returned anything for over a decade. But during this past decade, a solid bull market has emerged in silver, and like all bull markets, it has three stages. The first stage is the stealth phase, where smart money finds an undervalued asset and creates huge positions in the market. This is evident when Warren Buffett invested in silver in the late 1990s, along with Eric Sprott and James Turk in the early 2000s. Once smart money has significant positions, they want to market their ideas to institutional money that has access to more capital and development opportunities. I would mark the beginning of the awareness phase of the institutional money as the launch of the SLV ETF in May of 2006. Significant developments in the awareness phase 
of the current silver bull market is Warren Buffett being forced out of his individual silver position and the institutional interest in the ETF as a paper tool to siphon off real demand in physical silver with the paper equivalent and the SLV ETF. This was successful for a while until late 2007 when the physical demand started to outstrip the shorts in the paper silver market. Bear Stearns massive paper shorts in the silver position ultimately collapsed the Wall Street giant as silver hit multi-decade highs on St. Patrick's Day 2008. This caused Bear Stearns to become insolvent as their massive paper shorts lost exponential money. Ultimately, Bear Stearns was sold to J.P. Morgan for $2 a share. As a result, the very powerful J.P. Morgan inherited all of Bear Stearns' silver shorts and concocted plans to drive the price of silver down 60% from $21 to $8 over the gut-wrenching summer of 2008. This ties nicely with another aspect of the bull market, where in the middle of the awareness phase, there is a bear trap in the bull market where institutions sell their positions into stronger hands. As silver bottomed, the physical markets were met with further physical shortages and higher premiums as the physical markets responded to the extremes of the paper market manipulation. The next major development was whistleblower Andrew McGuire. He opened up the door to the rampant institutional paper manipulation of the paper silver markets. We finally had an inside look of what we were really up against. This brought public interest into this highly manipulated market. People now started to see that there was only a finite amount of physical silver against exponential losses of paper silver shorts. This naturally increased demand and silver started to rise from $8 all the way up to $50. I marked the end of the awareness phase of the institutional money as August 31st, 2010 when JP Morgan closed their proprietary commodities desk ahead of the Volcker rule. With the recent Blythe Masters interview, I believe that JP Morgan switched their role from the institutional manipulator to the broker for much larger balance sheets of the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. As soon as JP Morgan closed their proprietary commodities desk, silver rocketed from $17.76 to nearly $50 and nearly a straight upward movement. I mark this as just the beginning of the mania or public phase of the silver bull market. The mania stage is really a battle of the long individual physical stackers versus the institutional paper silver shorts. On the way up, the enthusiasm and money increased the physical demand of silver, making the silver short position untenable. Finally, May 1, 2011, the criminal elite attacked the silver market to protect their quadrillion dollar empire of control. Through massive naked silver shorts, increasing margins, and illiquid markets, they successfully knocked silver down $6 in 15 minutes, defying the logic of any seller trying to get the best prices for their metal when they sold. But this not-for-profit selling was just another way of stealing wealth from the paper longs that got forced out of their positions and dampened demand for this very volatile metal for over a year now. But there are multiple signs that this is coming to an end. Another aspect of this three phases of the bull market of silver During the stealth phase, smart money would be the ones with the problems. Individual hedge funds like long-term capital management threatened to blow up the market with their derivatives. The institutional money of Wall Street put an end to that crisis. As we moved into the awareness phase where institutional money was the problem, the 2008 crisis showed that Wall Street, with their institutions, threatened to bring down the system. During the 2008 Wall Street institutional money crisis, public money and sovereign nations were used to put an end to that crisis. Now all the problems and all the money rest in the societal problems. There is no higher place to hide this problem. As a result, this will break the confidence in our societal structure and break the entire system. The counterparty risk of all paper assets will play into the Kondratiev wave cycle, driving real wealth into real tangible things. The collapse must happen as the individual problems turn into institutional problems that turned into sovereign problems. Nowhere along the line was the tough medicine taken or real reforms made. As a result, we have a systemic crisis that will bring down this current paradigm. With this new bull market, we have created a 30-year cup and handle formation that is an extremely bullish formation if you look at the larger picture. For those of you that don't know, a cup and handle formation is a pattern of bar charts resembling a cup and a handle. The cup is in the shape of a U and the handle is a straight downward drift. The right hand of the pattern shows low trading volume. It can be as short as 7 weeks and as long as 65 weeks. According to this calculation, this would take us all the way out to August 2012. As the stock or commodity comes up to test the old highs on the right side of the cup, the stock or commodity will incur selling pressure by people who bought at or near the old high. This selling pressure will make the stock or commodity trade sideways with the tendency towards the downward trend for days or weeks. Then it will take off. Generally, cups with the longer and more U-shaped bottoms, the stronger the signal. 
Well, we certainly have had that for a 30-year formation. The depth of the cup ideally should not be very deep. Also, avoid handles that are too deep since handles should form in the bottom top half of the cup pattern. Volume should dry up on the decline and remain lower than average in the base of the bowl. It should then increase when the stock or commodity finally starts to make its move back up to test the old high. Once the bull trend is reestablished, it usually accelerates in an explosive nature. In this summer cycle, the last silver bull market of the 60s and 70s, higher prices brought on more production and less demand for a few months as the price of silver skyrocketed. For a few months, the generational silver deficit was reversed, but lower prices and technological demand of silver increased the deficit, and since 1981, we have been burning through huge stockpiles that all of humanity has accumulated. We are nowhere near the end of this bull market, and we will not see it end until the supply and demand are brought into order. This is evident when I got a response from the United States Geological Survey that said that if the current trend of silver consumption and destruction continues, it would make silver the first element on the periodic chart to become extinct, and that the only way to stop this is much, much higher prices that would either conserve the use of silver or increase the exploration and mining of new resources. This year-long battle that we've been enduring since May 1, 2011, between long physical stackers and increasingly worthless paper silver shorts, is coming to an end. We can clearly see this with a reverse head and shoulder pattern, which is a very bullish sign, and, and the 65-week handle formation, and the rising pennant formation, and even non-technical aspects like the low net asset value of Sprott Asset Management's fund. While I believe technical analysis is impossible in this highly rigged market, I do believe that you cannot stop an idea whose time has come. The criminal elite can manipulate the markets for a few days, and it will cost them dearly, but the overall trend cannot be stopped. This battle will continue until the real metal underlying the paper market is increasingly falling into stronger and stronger hands that will never sell back their silver for dollars that they didn't want years ago. Even the 45 degree declining trend of silver stockpiles at the registered vaults of the COMEX was only brought to a halt with the MF Global scandal that cheated 60,000 investors out of their positions and metals. At some point, hundreds of levered paper silver ounces of either leased metal, paper shorts, derivative markets will collapse under the fact that there is no real metal underlying their claims. And at that point, the silver door will be closed. It will not just be a resumption of the silver bull market, but a match to the silver rocket where the illusion will be lifted from the market and no one in their right mind would sell real physical silver for paper dollars, especially when those that are holding the real metal are morally opposed to this debt and death paradigm. This needless to say is very concerning for those that created, perpetuated, and profited off this paradigm, like paycheck players like Blake Masters and Jamie Dimon. They will be hung out to dry by their masters as the reason for this default and corruption in the silver market. Millions in bonuses for Blythe and billions in profits for J.P. Morgan and Jamie Dimon will be worthless when a whole society wants justice for the massive fraud that they profited off of and enabled. Because of the unlimited and exponential losses of derivatives and the fact that the eight largest banks are net short 150 days of global silver production and the trillions of dollars of derivatives above that, they are desperately trying to keep the lid on this through margin increases, naked shorts, MF Global thievery, disinformation through mainstream media pieces like the paper pusher barons, and even through the desperate attempt to open up a physical storage vault for J.P. Morgan and the 5 million ounces that suddenly appeared in the registered vaults. They must maintain the status quo or it will all go down. The only question is, will J.P. Morgan fall on the sword and defend this unsustainable system with quadrillions of dollars of paper losses? Or are they positioning themselves to be first in line for all the physical silver in their vaults and the SLV? Time will tell, but I assure you that when the silver door closes and the music stops, you will not be concerned about how much you paid for your silver, only that you did buy silver. That is also the day that Blythe, credit default swap masters, will be made out to be a scapegoat for this massive fraud, regardless of how insulated she feels right now from the Federal Reserve and the Treasury.